guys, feel free to move up. We can get cozy in here. <laughs> so, um, she gave a brief introduction. I'll get a little bit more in depth about um, who I am and all of that good stuff. Um, I want to welcome you all to our Camp Detroit. There's a, a lot of exciting talks going on right now, so I'm very thankful that you all uh, and privileged that you guys came in to, to hang out with me, so to speak. So before we get started, I want to do um, some housekeeping, let you guys know about ways you can get social with us throughout the conference, and then just be on the journey with us as we visit different talks and um, we hang out, because as you know, there's an um, after party and everything like that. So um, we, you can follow us on Twitter, um, at WordCountDetroit, and then the hashtag we'll be using is WCBET. So if you hear something that resonates with you, you agree. You can find me at Barely Arctic, and um, my company is called Barely Arctic. And it's articulating, I apologize. So um, that's how you can uh, be in touch with me. And our hashtag for this official talk is going to be Cold Dips. Okay? All right. So we can move forward. I see tons of inclusive faces. And I know our chat is going to have tons of perspective. So, uh, also, feel free to take notes because after my talk, we'll do a 10 minute QA so you all can uh, kind of probe me, engage my thinking, and, and understand a little bit more of one of the slides or topics that I cover. All right, so moving forward. Um, there is uh, an activity I would love for you guys to do with me so that we can demystify some of the perceptions about dyslexia. So grab out your phones or pull out your laptops and we'll get started with this activity. It is um, called Kahoot. And it's really just a truth or a myth about um, some of the things that people easily misconstrue when it comes to dyslexia. So I want to click on it here. And um, you need to go to, you can Google Kahoot, or it's kahoot.it. And Andy, if you don't mind coming up here for just a quick yep. second, because I want to click on the link that's just going to, oh, so I can see it here, but I can't see it here. So. Do you, are you using those? those yeah, I'm kind of using that. Well, no, I'm not using them, so I didn't put them okay. here. Sweet, so I'm going to do this really quick. So I just want to make sure that I can see you guys are saying. We can talk a little bit about um, some of the things that are easily misunderstood or, or disregarded when it comes to yes, like yes, yes, yes. Right, Excellent. So we're going to do the classic activity and let's see if we can start. It's going to give me a code. Is everybody on Kahoot.it? Alright, so the code to log in will be 498127. And just say got it when you are able to uh, get started. Okay, I see Cullen Andy against Smith. E Money. <laughs> I'll wait for a few more of you. Alright, Allison Plus. So we have four people in. You, you like the music over there? <laughs> Okay. 
And I have nine people in, so I'm going to get started. That's the majority of the ten. I'll see you in the next one. So we'll get started. Hello, hello. Hello. We're uh, looking at an activity we're going to do really quickly to gauge where everyone is. You can have to see, pull out your phone and uh, log in. This game is just to kind of warm us up, almost an icebreaker to see how much you already know about dyslexia. Um, we'll talk in depthly about some of the answers. So if you get something wrong, don't beat yourself up about it. It's all in all in game, it's all in fun. So we have one more person gonna wait till he gets in and then we're gonna start. Um, you can just grab your phone and go to the loop. Dot com. Dot IT. Uh, dot IT. I talked about it. Dot IT. And you'll we'll put the game in and we'll get started. Mm -hmm. And um, guys, don't be afraid to get closer either. <laughs> all the way in the back. You're all the way in the back. <laughs> Yeah. 
be serious to follow. Does that see the word in reverse? Is that true or is that false? I was going to say that. Flip flop. Trans is so bad. Trans is so bad. Trans is so bad. Trans is so bad. Trans is so
causing more strife. Okay, so it's not going to magically help you overcome this particular own ailment. You're going to keep reading and again suffering in silence. So it's not reading that can remediate dyslexia. All right, moving on. Dyslexia runs in families. It is inherited. Is that statement true or false? Seven of you said true, and seven of you are correct. It is a neurobiological ailment. It's not considered a disease. It's really just a difference in the way that you read. If your parents, either your mom or your dad, happens to have dyslexia, then it is likely that you will have it as well. But please be mindful of that when your parents were growing up, dyslexia wasn't a thing. So they may not even know that they have it. It may be that they didn't like to read or they didn't like school, things like that to have played a part. But if mom and dad or mom or dad had issues with reading or had dyslexia, then it's likely to too. All right, Veronica. Okay. Dyslexia is a neurological disorder, therefore a doctor, a medical doctor, has to diagnose it. Alright, let's see what the answers are. Okay, so you guys are right. Eight of you are correct, that is false. A medical doctor doesn't diagnose dyslexia. Usually it is an educational specialist or someone who is privy to um, Orton Dillingham instruction in how dyslexia works. So it's not something done at a hospital or clinic, so to speak. Um, what is done generally is research on the dyslexic brain opposed to um, a lexic brain. So those are the only things that medical doctors really involve themselves in. It's more of the research, the, the MRIs, doing cerebral, cerebral blood patterns, and understanding the brain and how it relates to dyslexia. But they won't be able to diagnose it because it really comes from educationers, an educational um, standpoint. Right. ADHD and dyslexia are commonly occur together. All right, Octavian. So we have 50 50. So the answer to this is, is actually true because 60% of individuals who experience dyslexia also have the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So it is very common that you have both. All right, I think we have, this may be our last one. Only English speakers can be identified as dyslexic. <clears throat> So um, I'm an educator by day, 
I work um, within the Detroit public school system. Oh, okay. And um, I'm, I'm a third grade teacher. So um, I was talking to my friend Allison over here about my introduction and how I would introduce you all. I mean, introduce you all to myself. Because I said, I'm so used to working with eight and nine year olds. And when I'm, you know, communicating with them or introducing myself to them, if I tell them my first name, it's like, oh my gosh, she has a first name. <laughs> <laughs> and we were joking because we said, you know, if you see one of your students in a grocery store, they're like, oh my gosh. Food. Yes. So, <laughs> was like, how do I talk to adults and really um, explain myself and who I am to you guys without uh, being, you know, embarrassed or ashamed that I eat food and have a first name? So, <laughs> so um, I'm a mother. I have a, a five-year-old. Um, his name's Terrell. He's definitely got dressed this morning. In, Thinking and under the impression that he's coming to cold at work now. <laughs> and no, you want to grab So he's precocious, uh, boy, and I've actually been teaching him how to code using code.org. So um, we shall see how, how that unravels. He, you know, as a five year old, he gets quite frustrated when he is unable to, to make the game work how it's supposed to work. But with coding, as you know, with using WordPress and different platforms, it's all about patience. Patience is the key. So I think that's really all about me. I love thrift shopping. Uh, I have, I still own my college car. Her name is Coconut, and I love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> Coconut and I have, have been all over. She's like over 200,000 miles at this point, but like, I'm definitely not giving her up until like the wheels fall or something. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, let's dive further in. So I'm going to show you guys a simulation really quickly about um, dyslexia. This picture you see up here is what a young man uh, created so that he could understand how uh, he could create a distinct way of identifying letters. Because again, with dyslexia, it's very difficult for um, individuals to, to decode words. So um, let me see. Can I click this? Yes, I can. So this is a simulation. I'll make it larger so you guys can see it. But now be mindful that obviously dyslexia comes in, in different forms and this is not by the means in all tell -all. But I really thought this was um, interesting. Someone used GitHub um, pages to create what they assume dyslexia looks like. So as you see, there are um, the letters are moving around on the page. Everything kind of looks alike and and sort of not. Is would anybody volunteer to try to, to read with the first line? <laughs> A friend who has dyslexia described to me how she uh, <laughs> interprets experiences. She can read, but it takes a lot of concentration. concentration, and thus letters seem to jump around. Yeah. So this is what some of our colleagues may be experiencing on a regular basis. However, this to me is an extreme form. This is not um, at all what I presume dyslexia is like, but um, it's very interesting to, to see. You know, we certainly take it for granted. Because uh, I would not have been able to read that very first passage. It's a little confusing to me. Like, huh? I know the love prayer, but that was probably it. <laughs> Moving on. They have created some really unique and unparalleled different fonts that exist. This one is from Dyslexia. It's a company in the UK. And what they use um, generally are some, some fonts that have heavy bottoms and unique um, openings so that you won't get the terms confused and you won't see that some of the letters are similar to other letters. So I try to make it a little bigger because you may not be able to see it, but I thought this was pretty awesome. Like the P has a larger bottom and the L, so you would never get those confused with any other letters. So yeah, there's a couple different fonts that exist, but this one is very popular in the UK. And I've actually used it before working with students. And um, to my understanding, they were really able to see the letters and they didn't mirror one another. 
because they were all very unique and distinct. And I have, we, our game took so long. <laughs> I want to try to fly through the next couple slides. Alrighty. So, this is a brain image of um, a lexic reader and a dyslexic reader. And as you will see, um, there are obviously some, some differences. And that's why it's a neurological or a neurobiological um, ailment. Because, as you see, the, le the lexic brain has a lot of activity going on on the left hemisphere. And if you look down at someone who has dyslexia and look at that brain pattern, you don't see a whole lot of activity going on there. So the brain dominance theory is definitely evolving around dyslexia because at first they were saying, well, maybe it's a hearing disorder. Well, maybe it's something with eyesight. But then we had some other doctors get together and do some research, and they said, wow, there are some differences with the blood flow and the activity and the strength of those two hemispheres, as you see. So um, let me see. I think I may have, uh, I know I don't have a whole lot of time. So we're going to move on to our next activity. And I wanted to stress how important it is that um, you acknowledge that dyslexia is, is different across the board. And so I went and grabbed some Rubik's Cubes because these, to me, symbolize the difference that people experience with the different um, colorful spectrums of dyslexia. Now, Rubik's Cubes are 44 years old. They have about 43 qu quintillion, can you guys say that, quintillion? <laughs> 43 quintillion um, configurations that can occur. And um, <clears throat> again, this symbolizes how puzzling dyslexia can be. I have a few extras, but feel free to share with some people next to you. I don't want to draw them in plastic, they might hurt. <laughs> there you go. Did you get us? There you go. All right, so we got enough for everybody. So take a moment and try to figure out how to we'll get it back to exactly where it was. Because we know we have six colors, 21 pieces, and 54 outer surfaces. So take a look. Did anyone produce a how to complete a Rubik's Cube? Not quite, so I may have done. Especially not this small. <laughs> it's a little bit more cumbersome that it's a little like this. Yeah. This dyslexia can be very puzzling. And um, again, this colorful spectrum that it has reminds me of the Rubik's Cube puzzle. Alright, so when you guys have mastered that, we'll move on. We have a few moments left. So let me get on to our next slide. Um, this slide before that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So this bump the person next to you when you get a chance, but it looks like everybody's pretty far from each other, so we won't just bump each other in that. But this symbolizes to me how technology and mankind can really partner with one another to create some really unique hacks. Okay, so when it comes to dyslexia, and you are a coder, whether you are doing front end or back end, it's very important that you have some different hacks and some different ways to accommodate yourself when you are at work or when you're working from home. Um, you have to have a way to leverage the playing field. Okay, so we have audio readers. Some audio readers can be really helpful, like um, Dragon, what is it, Dragon Speech. Speech. And what it will do, obviously, as you guys know, it will help read some of the wording for you. And you have a natural reader, which is really cool. And these are like great for those who experience ADHD. I just realized that. <laughs> because having something to kind of fish it with while you're, you're kind of getting your mind right for your um, a, your um, assignment or whatever you're doing at work. This is pretty awesome. So you also want to use moving to the next bullet internet filters. I know I have a very difficult time staying on task. So internet filters provide you with the opportunity to be unable to go to different websites. I mean, sometimes I am uh, creating code for something for work, and next thing I know, I'm on Facebook. 
how did I get there? I don't know. But, <laughs> but the internet filters <laughs> are so helpful because they can help block out the, the interwebs and everything that's happening. I've even talked to people who like disconnect their Wi-Fi router while they're working on something specifically so that they can stay focused and engaged. And then finally, you want to be practicing your syntax all the time. Because with um, being dyslexic, you just need the opportunity to practice, 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 so that when you come to the table with your counterparts, who are our typical developers, or they may not experience um, exceptionalities like you, you want to be able to, to bring a unique perspective <laughs> to be on their level, so to speak. So that's why it's important to use coding that or um, Code Academy and those types of platforms to help you learn or to better your syntactical skills because concepts can be tricky. Um, I have a friend with dyslexia who often sketches out his code before he goes in to do it. And some internet filters, now that I think about it, are going to be canine and verified, just in case you guys are really interested in looking at ways to block out what's going on on the internet. Alright, let's see. Moving on, I want to say, uh, I want to talk about, rather, some of our, um, <laughs> our ranks, join the ranks of those who have dyslexia. So, we have Octavia Spencer, who played in Hidden Figures, and she was also in The Help. You guys remember the, the chip pie from The Help, that was displayed here. We have Tim Tebow, he just retired from the NFL, now he's playing um, baseball in the major leagues, so he has dyslexia. Will Smith, comedian, rapper, and probably one of my favorite actors. Jennifer Aniston, America's sweetheart. Of course, Steve Jobs would be someone with um, a different ability in, in um, thinking, and uh, dyslexia is considered uh, MIT's disease because Top engineers, entrepreneurs, architects usually possess this particular difference. So that's it for me. I know I have like one minute left. We have two minutes. Q and A. Um, you got <laughs> <laughs> this is so fast. Oh <laughs> Imagine if I did a ten minute slide. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to ask the way. I know I didn't cover a whole lot and get in depth, but questions are certainly. So if you, um, so like say that you run a company, right, or you manage a team of developers, um, what are some of the ways that you can help support them? You know, maybe they don't know that they have dyslexia, or maybe they do, and you, you want to help support them be better at managing around that. You know, what are some of the ways that you would suggest doing that? Excellent question. So neurodiversity in the workplace is definitely a thing. Um, you have to imagine that no one is the same. The way we learn is completely different from others. So to support individuals who may exhibit or may not know that they have um, dyslexia, I would say to use multi-sensory um, activities, to uh, provide pictures for instructions, to make sure that the font is enlarged, and um, using different colors, and always uh, maybe using audio because when I think of multi-sensory, I'm thinking of all five senses. Obviously, you can't um, incorporate taste and smell, <laughs> but you definitely want to cover your bases with um, touching and being able to see differently. So just incorporating different ways for them to learn or for them to show their skills, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a two-part question. Okay. Um, so, Different types of dyslexia um, are, is there, okay. and how do you program? Like, if you're a programmer, how do you program okay. with dyslexia? Because stuff is jumping around, or the letters missing, or if you have uh, issues with numbers, how does that? How does that all? How do you deal? Great, another great question. So dyslexia is on a spectrum, kind of like autism. So there's like a severe, then there's a moderate, um, and then obviously there's like a low dyslexia where you kind of maybe have it, but not quite. So as it relates to um, programmers who have been 
identified as and having dyslexia. I would certainly um, use different hacks like I suggested as far as um, audio, because maybe seeing it, again, as you said, it's jumping around, it's going to cause you confusion and it's going to waste time. So maybe you need to hear the instructions of what you're supposed to be doing. Maybe you need to spend extra time on those sites like Coding Bag or Coding Academy so that you can get your syntax in order. Um, I've been told that solitude is very effective, having white noise or noise canceling headphones. And it's all about what's, it's finding what works for you. What works for you. I mean, you have to go through trial and error. But once you identify some ways that you work better, go for it. Yeah, I was going to say lighting. Yeah, I think lighting is a huge thing for us. I'm like, I'm like super mild. My daughter is just like way up on that spectrum mm -hmm. of, of the dyslexia. And But in fluorescent lights, my eyes are going everywhere on my page. I have a hard time in that lighting. Absolutely. And the screen of a computer, I can't even cover it. I think people use cold and specific colors because it sticks out to them a little better. So lighting is definitely a hack that you can use. I would have to light up for the same thing though for us. The lights are still like that blue tinted. Rose is really good. Blue tinted glasses. Yeah, roses. Has that been helpful for you? You know what? I don't go to the office anymore because of the lights. When I'm home, I just turn off the lights. Okay. And it's. I don't have no running to do okay. the flat. Well, I should do that. <laughs> you should. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to work. Well, you're saying that because there's just like, it's kind of a running joke in the developer community, like they like dark rooms and turn the lights off. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, when I walked into my new job earlier in this year, all the lights were off and I was like, is anybody here? They were all, you know, that's just their way of coping. And, and not necessarily because it's dyslexia, it's just mm -hmm. it's a concentration thing. And yeah. It makes it easier for them to. Yeah, there, there are no, um, there are no light switches at, at our work, and like one of the developers stood up on there and was like, "I'm not unscrew all this." This is generally like trial and error, finding out what exactly works and helps motivate you. I love working with them. It's okay. Yeah, I was about to say, "Walking through like you're talking about a specific font that appeals to the the mind, which is like six a lot that's Yeah, 
question to correct me. But have you actually, um, cause I know your accent is very distinct. So when you were being schooled, you were schooled in the, the UK, correct? Somewhat sort of. Really? Okay. Um, Okay, to my defense, I appreciate that. <laughs> but what I was going to say is, um, you know, different countries, again, do things so much differently as it relates to dyslexia and I end up here considered a specific language disorder, like within our school systems. So it's just really um it varies everywhere. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, actually one more. If you think that your child has dyslexia, what are the steps? What are the steps? Like who do you go to at the school and say we need testing or this might need to be accommodated or what do you do? <laughs> so, you would need to talk to the, the, the teacher first to see if maybe they notice some differences in the way that they're reading or writing or their inability to, and then at that point the teacher can request uh, further evaluation. Um, what they'll need to bring to the table is obviously your information, what you've observed, what the teacher has observed, and um, then thorough testing will be at that point. Now, there's different timelines in different districts. Sometimes they test you within 30 days, some 90. So it would just kind of depend on um, the, the rigor of that particular district and how quick they are to assess those students. But you definitely want to talk to the, the teacher first so they can be all, everybody can be aligned with their um, concerns. Because if the teacher says, well, these three is fine for me, I, I don't know, then you know, obviously there's this. You want to get uh, as much input as possible, and you also want to have observations and some evidence, documentation showing that, you know, I asked him to read this paragraph, and he was unable to read this or that, or this is what he said, so, yeah. At that point, what I think kids do at home is like, I don't know, I don't know. I don't have one. Well, let me call your paint real quick, see if they talk to you. Oh, yeah, no, we don't have to call them. Don't worry about it. I don't know what to call them. Call them. <laughs> So yeah, that's the kind of misconception, like, you never do that to kids, you know, what are you doing in school? They don't know. You have homework. No, we don't. <laughs> are you reading? Sometimes, sometimes not. So talking to the teacher uh, would, would certainly help kind of bring everything to full circle. Alright, any more questions? Because I want to wrap it up. Well, you guys have been a great crowd. I hope I've answered some, some dying questions that you've had. Um, I will make this available to you all. It's actually, I created a bit.ly link for it. So if you want to utilize it or yeah, so you know, we, check it out. We did an analysis and analysis, but we're, we'll get links from all the speakers. We'll do a blog post afterwards with links to all the sites. So yeah. you can just go through and find what you want. So that's it. Join the ranks of these cool people and all the engineers and architects and, and entrepreneurs that exist. If you have all this legacy, you are not alone. There are some people doing some amazing things all over the world. I just found out Jay Leno is dyslexic. So we just said, yeah. Yeah, I just feel sorry for people like Jay Do you still want I am. Uh, uh, <laughs> all the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Auto-correct. Oh, it's, it's a good, a good hack to have. Yes, but when it's <laughs> really bad, it will, it will make some weird one. Like, what? How did I even get that away? And auto-correct is almost bad to a point. Um, I think Randy needs this. Um, auto-correct is almost bad to a point because it fixes it for you.